Welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining us today as we review the 2022 fund flows. My name is Kyle Gears, and I'm a senior customer success manager here at YCharts with a focus on institutional relationships. I also have my colleague, Nicole Simos, joining me, and we work exclusively with asset management firms and distribution teams. So we like to take a look at the flow data and add some value from our the teams that we work with or to our clients as far as where is the flow going? What can that tell us and what can we derive from the data? Throughout today's demonstration, you can submit questions via the Q&A chat feature within Zoom. A recording presentation will be sent to all of those that have registered. And there's also gonna be a replay posted to our YouTube channel. So make sure that you like and subscribe so you can stay on top of all of our latest releases. For all the folks who are YCharts professional clients, you can find a copy of the deck that we're going to go through today within the website by going to the support section, resources, and fund flow reports. So you'll basically see the reports, the traditional fund flow reports, as well as any additional content that we post, such as the presentation deck. Let's go ahead and jump into things by setting the scene for 2022. So a lot happened within the calendar year. You had Fed rate hikes, ripping inflation, rising mortgage rates, and poor performance from a, a lot of the major indices or asset classes in general. The first thing that we're going to start out with is asset flows for 2022 for broad categories. And this is a combination of both mutual funds and ETFs. A couple things to point out here. So we're looking at this graphic on the left-hand side. Alts made a return. They were number one in terms of net inflows for 2022. And they actually held their own and did well for those who had alternative allocations to the portfolio. We also saw miscellaneous with net inflows, quite a few more than all the other categories. And you might be thinking, what is miscellaneous? That's gonna be a lot of the leveraged ETFs, uh, a lot of things that you know, aren't traditional asset classes, uh, digital assets as well are included in that number. But the one thing to take note of is the glaring amount of outflows for fixed income. I mean, a year where the ag was down right around 13%, a lot of folks were you know, heading toward the exits and waiting or sitting on the sidelines for things to change. And if you take a look on the right-hand side, you have the fourth quarter flows. And the one thing that stands out there is money markets. Everyone putting cash on the sidelines, especially if you're getting a 4% yield to see how things shake out. So a lot of money into money markets also not included here, but CDs as well. But overall, a lot of risk off in the fourth quarter of 2022. Next, I'll pass it over to Nicole to cover the next slide. Thanks, Kyle. In this next slide on the left-hand panel, we're looking at the 2022 asset flows broken down by equity style. And then we've got Q4 on the right-hand panel. U.S. equity funds remained relatively resilient, as we can see here in 2022, despite overall poor market returns. This was largely due to positive flows into large blend, as we can see on the left-hand panel, that's the uh, dark blue bar uh, representing about $124 billion of inflows. And this was, uh, it was offsetting outflows from other categories, except for both large value and mid-cap blend, which both saw substantial inflows. It's also worth noting that investors saw positive outcomes primarily from value-oriented funds across the year, evident by examining that the flows into value far outweighed the flows into growth exposures in 2022. Overall, Q4 reflected similar trends across equities as we saw throughout the year. So taking a look at that chart on the right-hand side of the screen, the only exceptions here were large value, which took a dive of $4.2 billion in outflows, detracting from its overall strong performance in 2022, 
and small value and small blend, which both saw minimal inflows in Q4. And I'll go ahead and pass it back to Kyle. Next, we're going to break down flows on the equity side between both mutual funds and ETFs. So we're going to split this out. And this has been a common theme that we've seen almost every month across our fund flow reports is you're seeing a lot of outflows from funds and ETFs continue to garner assets. Now, if we're looking at 2022 as a whole, yep, somewhat of a common theme here, large blend leading the way just due to the environment, a lot of assets going into large blend, yeah, especially a lot of, a lot of dividend based strategies. So dividend and value were two key areas where assets were moving into throughout the year as a whole and large caps continue to significantly outpace mid caps and small caps. Then if you take a look at the right hand side, strictly looking at Q4 across the board, except for mid cap blend, we see outflows across mutual funds, ETF side, inflows across the board. Now, if you take a step back and think about it, you know, what might be leading to that? Is it something related to fees? Is it related to tax efficiency? Could it be that, you know, investors, advisors, institutions are using more ETFs in models? So something to think about going forward as we see the disparity between funds and ETFs. Absolutely, Kyle. Great points there. On this slide, we can see not only the flows by equity style for December 2022, Q4, and the entire year, but also performance across the same periods. So taking a look at the right-hand panel of this image here, Q4 saw strong performance, most notably led by value-oriented funds, specifically large value, mid-value, and small value consecutively. However, December 2022 saw drastic losses across equities, as well as substantial outflows in large and mid growth, further dividing that trend between growth versus value. Investors favoring value may continue into 2023, given the possibility of you know, additional rate hikes, which are likely to impact growth equities more so than value equities. Next, we're taking a look at the sector breakdown for flows. And honestly, it'd be exactly as you would expect given the environment. What the flows are telling us is that a lot of investors are preparing for a recession. So historically, sectors like consumer defensive and utilities, healthcare, energy, all tend to do fairly well during recessionary periods. You see massive outflows out of tech, real estate, financials, interestingly enough, and not so within the fourth quarter, but 2022 communications as well. And you're talking sectors that have gotten hit the hardest over 2022, communications and technology. If you look toward the right-hand side, we see consistency with those flows. 22 and Q4 of 22, you have a lot of similarities there in terms of where the money is actually going. As mentioned, it looks like investors are anticipating or believe that we are currently in a recession. In this next slide, we're going to be looking at fixed income flows across both mutual funds and ETFs. So again, on that left panel, we were looking at the entire year of 2022. On the right side, we've got Q4. In 2022, investors were attracted to the longer end of the yield curve across government and diversified bond funds. Coupled with the safety of government bonds, we saw long government funds pulling the most assets across fixed income for a total of $46.6 billion dollars even though they didn't necessarily yield the best returns. On the flip side, short-term bonds, which contain a mixed bag of credit qualities, saw the greatest outflows at $69.5 billion, indicating that investors may have moved funds from short-term bonds into money markets or CDs. 
Also notable was the movement from core plus to core bond funds. Because of the greater risk and lower quality in core plus bond funds, investors seem to gravitate towards core bonds because of the general higher quality. With rising rates, investors ex exited uh, core plus bond funds rather aggressively throughout 2022, resulting in $39.7 billion of outflows. This next graphic covers actively managed funds versus passive funds. And what we do to determine this data is we use an identifier that basically states whether or not that manager is tracking an index. If they are tracking an index, we're putting it in the passive bucket. If they are not tracking to an index, we're designating that in the active bucket. So if you take a look at the left, you have active products. We split it up between active ETFs, active mutual funds, and we aggregated the both for all active funds. You can see that ETFs saw inflows over December Q4 of 22 and 22 as a whole, whereas actively managed mutual funds have seen outflows in all three of those periods. And what we do see with the net or the result is active funds have seen outflows across the board for December Q4 and 2022. On the passive side, it's the opposite story. Passive ETFs have seen inflows in December, in Q4, and the entire calendar year of 2022, and pretty substantially. As far as passive funds go, the only blip there is there was outflow uh, from passive funds in Q4 of 22, and across the board, passive funds have gained quite a few assets over those three time periods. And then in this next image, we are only looking at inflows and outflows for mutual funds. So up top, we're going to give you the top categories that saw the greatest inflows. On the bottom, we'll do the same, but for outflows. It was a very interesting year for mutual funds, which suffered their first calendar year of outflows in decades. In Q4, inflows for mutual funds were really concentrated primarily in money market funds, intermediate core bonds, and retirement target date funds. More than any other investment strategies, target date funds have the diversity and consistent upward movement to make investors feel more comfortable in any kind of market, especially including one that is challenged by inflation and a looming recession, both of which were themes in 2022, especially as we moved closer to Q4. So across the board, we keep seeing these general themes of mutual fund investors moving their money into traditionally safer investment vehicles, along with the flight out of more uh, risk on investments and in equities and less desirable fixed income vehicles, as we've discussed. As we continue along in this down market, investors may be moving more than usual, and I'm sure we'll gain some valuable insight across the next few months. Here we're looking at ETF flows, the most inflows and outflows in Q4. And once again, we've sort of seen the theme, large blend and large value have taken the bulk of that inflow or at least leading given the environment. And once again, value holding up well during periods of high inflation or you know, during recessions, looking at opportunity in those low multiples. And then you see a lot of strength in dividend growth strategies across large blend. Uh, interesting to see large growth in, in Q4 as well. You know, has that market bottomed or has growth you know, near to bottom? We'll see. Foreign large blend, also another interesting opportunity with the dollar falling and you know, positioning, a, a, I guess, a winning streak, I would say, for foreign or emerging markets even. And a high yield bond, looking at the value that you get there in terms of where prices are now, interesting to see that leading within the top five categories. 
outflows you know, changing of the guard here as far as the inflation protected products, inflation you know, rolling over, showing signs of it has caused investors to flee some of those products as well as commodities. Once inflation rolls over, you usually see the same with commodities. So once again, investors preparing for that change. That wraps up the demonstration or the webinar on fund flows. If you're not subscribed to receive the latest fund flow reports, you can access them via this link here, go.ycharts.com slash fund flows opt-in. We send them out every month around the 15th. And then as I mentioned earlier, for previous fund flows, any historical timeframes, you can access that within the website and our fund flow library under the support section and fund flows.